Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. Today I want to look at the Sister Lucy theory, the two Sister Lucy theory. The idea that there was a fake Sister Lucy and a true Sister Lucy, that maybe the true Sister Lucy was killed and a fake nun was put in her place. I first came across this theory back in the early 2000s when I first got the internet or when I was first returned to my Catholic faith. I loved everything about the apparitions of Fatima. I was kind of interested in what Father Gruner said. Initially, I completely rejected him and rejected his ideas. But as I was reading up on various Fatima websites, I came across a thumbnail suggesting that there were two Sister Lucys, probably on a forum. And at the time I thought, you know, this this just, just seems ridiculous. And over time, it seems like more people have come on board with the idea that there were two Sister Lucys. So I feel like I need to give the the whole thing a bit more serious consideration. The basis for the two Sister Lucys was not originally pictorial. It wasn't originally based on the fact that these two women look different. The picture of the, the old grainy image taken at Fatima 1917 or, or shortly afterwards. And then the, the image of the woman in her 80s, which is much clearer, much sharper. The sister, two sister Lucy's claim started off as a response to the difficult fact of the 1992-1993 interviews of Sister Lucy. And I've put up the Sister Lucy Truth website here because it actually does a, a pretty nice textual analysis of the 92-93 interviews. Because the 92-93 interviews, this website's correct in that the 92-93 interview shows her sister Lucy who seems completely different in what she's saying compared to the stuff that sister Lucy had been coming out in her early interviews and particularly this website is thinking of interviews she made in the 50s 40s 30s 20s especially this interview with father Fuentes in 1957 in this 1992-93 set of interviews Above all, Sister Lucy changes her mind and says that the consecration done by John Paul II, 1984, was, was enough and it fulfilled Our Lady's requests that she made at Fatima. When, when previously, beforehand, that is in the, in the 50s, she had set out quite clear conditions about or this is what the sister lucy truth thing is implying that she set out quite clear conditions about the consecration of russia and what was required for the consecration of russia the you know the details of that um so we've got we've got this textual thing that that what sister lucy is saying in the in the 1992 1993 it just seems really different from the traditional message from the 60s and then after that, there was a kind of, what do we do with this? What do we do with the fact that the, what she's saying is so different? He's Father Gruner, uh, who has a lovely video, Was There a Fake Sister Lucy? Father Gruner, he thinks that this, these interviews, 92, 93, were actually done by a woman who was like a, a plant. It wasn't the real Sister Lucy giving the interviews. It was someone else. I don't think that. I'll come to my conclusion a bit later. But he seems to think that these 92, 93 interviews can be uh, can be dismissed. They they're not genuine. It was some woman under obedience, another sister doing it under obedience. And the fact that the person that interviewed the sister Lucy hadn't met her before enabled this to, to happen in a way that wouldn't be possible if there was like a genuinely objective interviewer, no, uh, someone that had known her previously, known the, the Sister Lucy previously over many years or something. Okay, and then after this, the fact that the interviews were so different, there was then a consideration of images. And they like to focus on 
the early images of Sisuci, particularly some of the most famous ones, which seem to seem to portray a very narrow looking chin. Uh, some of them portray a narrow looking chin. Uh, like this one has a more a narrower looking chin on sister on Lucy as she was then, and they say, "Oh, that's really different from the from the one uh, in post nineteen sixty seven uh, when she's when she's really old." Particularly these ones, um, you know, these ones here, saying, oh, "You know, this one. Look at look at the chin. She looks she looks so different." Um, you know, they love to put put the, this one here or something. To show how different the individuals are but actually my problem with the images thing is that it's true when you compare hand-picked ones there is a distinct difference but look at for instance the point here when the woman has now entered carmel she's entered carmel this image here as Carmel, to me, it kind of looks, you know, fairly different from that image there. But even Sister Lucy Truth website is acknowledging that up to this point, we have the same sister, the same sister. And actually, you can kind of see it. If you if you look, my view is that, that actually even the pictorial evidence is not great. You just have to look more focus at a different set of images if you focus on like this one for instance as a girl a chin is kind of a bit broader um and also um if you focus then on this one here you know look at that chin there look at her there that's it a lot of the problems with the images comes from i think this habit that she used to wear as a dorothean like this, you know, this is the famous one that Sister Lucy Truth always puts in front of you. The, the, the habit actually makes her face look narrower. And this is when, this is before she had all her teeth removed. She had really bad teeth. And, and again, if you read a bit of the uh, biography under the gaze of the Immaculate, which I've got, uh, which I've been, which I've been looking through. If you read under the gaze of the Immaculate, you can or under the gaze of mary you can read about some of the illnesses you can read about her bad teeth and you can see in that sister lucy picture those teeth are not good those teeth are rotting away and so they were removed and she's wearing dentures then and i know my dad had bad had dentures that weren't great for a while and they really changed his appearance dentures can change someone's jawline and we even see a kind of, I dare say that, that this point here is probably the time that she's now got dentures. And you can see a continuity as she passes through the 30s and goes into her 40s. Um, the gap between these two bottom pictures here and then the top two pictures here, it's not, it's not great. It's not that different, really. Um, I think the case isn't so strong. The case isn't so strong when you look at uh, when you look at all the pictures going through the years. The case of the pictorial case of the two sister Lucys isn't as strong. And also, like we then get color, we then get color, and we and we get high definition images, and and we're starting off looking at really grainy things of high definition images. I'm amazed that Sister Lucy Truth managed to find various so-called experts and analysis to look at images and, and say that they, they were different individuals. But now let me get to the real issue with the, with the Sister Lucy Truth. Um, and that is it doesn't actually explain the situation. It do, 67 is when they, when they like to put the cutoff point. This is a point that we have a new Sister Lucy. This is the point we've got a new Sister Lucy here. And they like to say that because she's silent in those years. And then 1992, she gives an interview that has some really strange stuff in it, has some really unusual stuff in it. And so they, and they see that, well, the 1992 Sister Lucy looks pretty similar to the 2000 Sister Lucy. Um, but maybe she doesn't look quite like 
the sister Lucy when she was 30 or 20. And so they say, okay, um, let's say that the fake sister Lucy begins, or let's say it just begins from the silent period of 67. Um, even though, even though there's, there's an evident, there's an evident similarity, uh, between the sister Lucy, uh, here, for instance, a high definition picture or fairly high definition picture. And then here, uh, they, 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 they're individuals that look, that look very similar, um, you know, here. And so, and so then the, the situation is, if we find things that are said before 1992, i.e. between 1967 and 1992, which are traditional, then um, it defeats the idea of there being two Sister Lucy's. Let me rephrase that. The reason we're invoking two Sister Lucy's is because of the 1992 interview. If that is so drastically different from the 1957 interview, the last public interview with Father Fuentes. If, however, there's stuff in 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, that continues along the line of 57, then it doesn't seem like we've got... The, the reason for the two Sister Lucy's was the strange interview. And then they say, oh, strange interview means different Sister Lucy. Different Sister Lucy, let's have a look. Oh, okay, back in the 50s, she does look a bit different from the 67 onwards when she appears in public with Pope um, Paul VI. She looks different in the, the first kind of video clips, high quality video clips. She does look different. And so they say that's a fake Sister Lucy then in 67. But if the if the so-called fake of 67 onwards or 60 onwards is actually saying things that correspond more with the 57 Sister Lucy, then then she's not really the fake Sister Lucy. And, and that's what Fatima, the Fatima, Fatima.org website gives us an insight to that. And you'll notice that, that the fake Sister Lucy, Sister Lucy Truth, it doesn't consider any of the stuff that was said by Sister Lucy between 67 and 1992. It presumes that she didn't say anything. It presumes that after 1960, when she's silent, there's no communication between Sister Lucy and the world. And the next communication is 1992, where she says something really different from 1957. But that's not the truth. That's not that's not a true representation of the events. We see that, yep, in 57, there's Father Fuentes, where he has a very uh, interesting interview with Sister Lucy. But wait about this. It's only in 67 and the publishing of the memoirs that we even know about the consecration of Russia. That's not something that fake Sister Lucy, that Sister Lucy Truth website tells you anything about. It's only in 67 that the public even know about the consecration of Russia. So it's the fake Sister Lucy, so it seems, that tells us that Russia needs to be consecrated. You know, that doesn't add up if it's fake Sister Lucy at that point. Um, and then... There's the fact that fake Sister Lucy is seeing people and she's telling people stuff that that contradict the 1992-1993 um, suggestions of Sister Lucy. In particular, there are interviews that um, Sister Lucy makes in 82 and 83. Sister Lucy repeatedly denies that the consecration has been done. Again, in 1985, Sister Lucy affirms the consecration of Russia has not been done in an interview in Saw the Fatima magazine. We're told in 89 that there's an instruction being given to Sister Lucy that, they ha that she has to say that the consecration has been done. 
there's a lot of pressure from the Vatican. It's clear through the 80s and the 90s for Sisseleusi to publicly say that the consecration is done. Even though at that point, up to that point, up to 1992-1993, it does seem that all of the things that Sisseleusi is saying in private to people that visit her, to people that see her, consecration hasn't been done. So the idea that 19, that um, the fake, so it's a fake Sisseleusi then, who is saying the consecration hasn't been done all through the 80s, after, after 84, and before the interview in the beginning of the 90s, 92. A cousin of a cousin of Sister Lucy explains that, that she's been told that consecration hasn't been done. Yeah, there's an important one in eighty two as well that I didn't mention by this Umberto Maria Pasquale, where he is allowed to interview and speak to Sister Lucy and he's able to explain. I wanted to clarify the question of the consecration of Russia and having recourse to the source. In 78, I had a lengthy interview with Sister Lucy. Sister, I should like to ask the question you. If you cannot answer me, let it be. But if you can answer, I'll be most grateful to you for you to clear up a point for me, which does not seem clear to me. As Our Lady ever spoken to you about the consecration of the world to Immaculate Heart. World, that is world. No, Father Umberto, never. At the COVID in 1917, Our Lady had promised, I'll ask for the consecration of Russia. And at Twi. She said, the moment has come for the Holy Father to consecrate Russia. So, Father, Father, Father Pasquale, Father Pasquale has this conversation uh, with Sister Lucia, the fake Sister Lucia, according to the website, in 78, an interview, a private interview, and consecration of Russia, explaining what's required for it, and... The fake Sister Lucy seems to have surprisingly the same attitude as the Sister Lucy of 67, 1967, when she first asked for the consecration of Russia to be done. So along with the consideration of the fact that the fake Sister Lucy seems to have a consistent outlook of the third secret of the consecration right up until 1992-1993, it doesn't seem like it seems if there's a fake Sister Lucy, it's 92, 93. It seems like 67 to 92, she's extremely consistent on the matter. In anyone that comes to see her, uh, she's, um, she's saying very consistent things on the subject. And she doesn't actually, because she is in silence, that's certainly the true. She's silenced in 67. So she doesn't tell us stuff about reparation about fasting about penance although she does release some memoirs in 67 let's not forget the memoirs are released in 67 and I, the memoirs are decent the memoirs seem pretty decent to me they they aren't full of wacky theology they're you know they're they're quite beautiful and indeed i'm pretty sure that that the memoirs begin in 67 but like the section about jacinta and francisco that comes later. So the problem with the fake Sister Lucy thing is that if Sister Lucy is fake from 1960 onwards, then the memoirs are all fake. Almost everything we know about Francisco and Jacinta comes from those memoirs. So everything we know about them is fake all the anecdotes and stories that you know about francisco and jacinta it all comes from sister lucia's memoirs and and the section with francisco and jacinta is is way after 67 so so if sister lucy is fake in 1993 and it's traced back to 1960 then we can almost forget about everything we know about Fatima because it's all been faked. That's the that's that's the consequence of the fake Sister Lucy theory. It's not just the idea that oh yeah Fatima was was really orthodox and really beautiful and then in and then the and then the Vatican silenced it and the evidence of that is the fact that in ninety two 
Sister Lucy, the new Sister Lucy, says some weird stuff. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. If Sister Lucy is fake, she's fake from 19, according to the to the pictorial analysis argument, she's fake from from 60 onwards. And that means uh, that we can't really trust anything. We don't know anything about Fatima. That's what it means. The alternative view, Father Gruner's view, is that the 92, 93 interviews were done by a fake Sister Lucy. But that's not the the only possibility. But before I get to the final possibility, just another point that um, Father Gruner makes about the idea of there being a fake Sister Lucy that I think is really interesting. Take it away, Father. It's, it's telling that when they released what they said was the whole third secret in June 2000, they never had Sister Lucy around. Mm -hmm. She wasn't there. If they had, you know, uh, if if they had this fake person being out to carry this on, and it's simple enough that, she, in fact, she wasn't even watching it. But the more important thing is, so she asked the question. Well, we don't, except for an extraordinary reason, we don't won't watch television. Well, what do you want to do? The World Cup of Soccer? That's more important than, you know, well, what is it? So they wouldn't, basically, she was so, they were afraid of her. They were afraid of her saying that that's not the whole thing. When they sent Cardinal Bertoni to Sister Lucy in June 2000. So he's saying there that, if the Seleucid was faked, why didn't they wheel her out a lot more? Particularly, why didn't they wheel her out the day that they revealed publicly the third secret? And again, the fake Sister Lucy thing relies on this false supposition that no one was seeing Sister Lucy while she was in the convent. You know, people have this romantic idea of once you're entered into Carmel, no one ever sees you or ever visits you. But actually, you just need to read this biography of Sister Lucy and you can see that that from before she was in the Carmel and after she was in the Carmel, plenty of people were coming to see her. And indeed, some of the same people saw her because, I mean, naturally, the idea is it's when she goes to Carmel that the fake comes in. But um, but even in the pictures, they show a Carmel Sister Lucy as um, they saw a Carmel Sister Lucy as both in the pre-67 and in the post-67. Um, and they acknowledge that they are the same subject. They acknowledge they're the same individual. Um, Carmel Sister Lucy is down there. And this Carmel Sister Lucy, so, so they're saying that, that the fake came in sometime when she was in Carmel, but not straight, Not it wasn't the one that went to Carmel. The, the one that went to Carmel was the same one. But what I want to say is that the boat before and after she went to Carmel, there were plenty of people visiting her. And some of the people were even the same individuals. Um, bishops, for instance. The bishop that was of Coimbra Carmel, he met her both before and after she was in the Coimbra Carmel. And there were other individuals that were seeing her both before and after. You can see through this this book that, that for example, her... We read very soon onwards, after Sister Lucy has gone to Carmel, her niece switches over and goes to Carmel as well. And so she's got her niece there in Carmel with her. And so that, and, and so there's there's continuity of, of individuals there. There are, um, yeah, the Sister Amelia, her, her niece, goes to, to join them. Um, and she becomes Sister Agnes. Some of the individuals some of the Carmelite individuals would have been exactly the same over those those decades and they would have noticed that the Sister Lucy had been changed, had been killed or something. Um, there's there's journalists that see her both before and afterwards and Father Gruner talks about how there were family members that were seeing her continually through that time in Carmel and they would have noticed that all of a sudden the person's changed. Or, you know, this conspiracy of fake Sister Lucy has so many holes. I've, I've explained some of them. There's the hole in the fact that they didn't use the fake Sister Lucy as much as they could have done. And they could have used her right from the 60s. She could have been saying from the 60s, 67 onwards russia doesn't need to be consecrated just the world just the world she wasn't 
She was telling people privately Russia needs to be consecrated and doing interviews talking about what exactly needed to happen. If it was fake Sister Lucy, there would have been relatives who would have been saying, oh, this is quite strange, it seemed a bit strange uh, today. She had a different accent, she looked different. Her chin, what had happened to her chin? That wasn't happening. Then you've got the fact that, as I've, I've already mentioned, the memoirs, the memoirs being begin to be released by the fake Sister Lucy. So everything we know about Fatima is released by the fake Sister Lucy, according to this. The, even the request for there to be a consecration of Russia is comes from 67 and presumably then, therefore, comes from the fake Sister Lucy. There is no fake Sister Lucy. How do we then explain the 92-93 interviews? The issue's explanation is that the pressure that she was put under, she finally caved in. She finally caved into the pressure. The Vatican is sending cardinals to you, is sending, you know, loads of holy men seemingly holy men to visit you telling you this is what you need to say now this is what god wants of you this is correct this is how you need to be speaking and i think she just caved in she finally had enough you know she wasn't in some ultra traditionalist convent she was in a carmel and the atmosphere of the carmel obviously was one of obedience to the ordinary and I think that that atmosphere of obedience to the ordinary probably just just eventually got hold of her. And so she said, yes, maybe, you know, she was getting older and she just caved in and said, yeah, I think, um, yeah, maybe maybe it is just Russia. Maybe it's the world is enough. And especially with that miracle happening to John Paul II of him surviving the gunshot of the gunshot wound being on on May the 13th. Maybe it just all clicked for her and she just finally gave in. When you read the biography of Sister Lucy, there are some instances that suggest that her temperament might be in this direction. There's an anecdote in the biography that talks about when she's a, a nun in the convent and she's got the responsibility of cleaning the, the church, I think. And there's a priest there or a superior like a bishop or a monsignor is in the church and watching Sister Lucy clean the chapel. And Sister Lucy is being very devout. She's going in, she's she's genuflecting every time she passes the tabernacle. Um, even when she, you know, she kicks a cruet, she passes the tabernacle, she genuflects. She brings a missile, she genuflects as she passes the altar. Just like like you do, you know, like you do, because it's our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And this bishop, this prelate, this monsignor, he says to Sister Lucy, Oh, just genuflect once. Once is enough, and then bow. And the biography tells us how she did that, how she obeyed that request. And I think if that's her temperament, to kind of is that good? maybe it's a good temperament maybe because i am stubborn i don't see it as a good temperament but i would think that there's some things that that cannot be obeyed and that genuflecting every time is maybe that's something that can be obeyed it's a borderline one it's certainly a borderline but if the pope keeps visiting you and telling you this is what the church asks of you you're getting older your memory is maybe failing you know, you just, uh, my opinion is the, sister, the 92, 93 interviews were genuine. It's just that Sister Lucy um, had a change of heart under a lot of pressure. Wanting an easy life, pressure from all directions, she caved in. Whether she was right, whether she was wrong, almighty God knows. The book Fatima in Twilight, produced by the Fatima Center, contemplates this possibility. And that's why I like that book, Fatima in Twilight, Twilight by the Fatima Center. It contemplates that that is also a possibility that maybe Sister Lucy just gave in and she accepted the official party line. There's no fake Sister Lucy. There's one Sister Lucy. She's gone to God now. May Almighty God bless her. May she now very soon, if she's not already, be in paradise. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.